Okay, so we're starting out with the pediatric tumors, the right upper quadrant, pediatric tumors, kind of the classics. So you can see this uh, large rounded mass with an irregular hypodense center. There's a little rim of compressed and displaced liver tissue out to the patient's left, but for the most part, this is all mass. You can see it pretty much occupies the entirety of the right liver lobe. There's a little rim, again, of displaced normal liver tissue out at the periphery. This, of course, is a classic hemangioendothelioma. And these do behave just like hemangiomas in adults. If you wait long enough, you will get peripheral puddling uh, on the uh, outskirts of these masses. Uh, in the emergency world, we can't always wait around for that. And remember, the bigger it is, oftentimes the longer you have to wait for that. So you might have to wait a, a couple hours even to see peripheral puddling here. Nice demonstration of it here on the coronal. Now, these are probably the easiest of the right upper quadrant tumors, because I don't think anybody would be uh, baffled as to the organ of origin for this particular tumor. And that's that's really what the challenge in these pediatric right upper quadrant tumors is. So that's a hemangioendothelioma. And of course, I know you're all thinking about platelet sequestration and kassebach merritt syndrome, but let me just tell you, so is everyone studying for their boards. So you're not the only one that knows that. <laughs> I, here I am, I took my boards 20 years ago and I'm still thinking it. All right, let's move on to our next one. This one is a renal mass, which is a Wilms tumor. Note that claw sign, just a beautiful demonstration of a primary renal tumor, right? That's what you need to see. So here it is, and you can see, right, This, uh, these can be pretty confusing, right, in terms of what organ is that originating in? Well, you have to look on all planes, of course, but always you're looking for that claw sign. That really suggests this came from the kidney. Let's look at that one more time. And then let's go to the coronal, and this really helps to tell the story. There's that claw sign again. The one other thing, and you can really see, it's not invading, it's not originating from, and it is displacing the liver significantly. But the other thing you want to see is that adrenal gland, right? Because neuroblastoma is on your differential for these right upper quadrant tumors. Now, again, that claw sign on the kidney is pretty convincing, but I think before you call it definitively, you want to go find that right adrenal, and make sure it's there and normal. So very nice case of a Wilms tumor. You note that's not apostrophe S, it's not possessive. Uh, my old attending, Irv Freundlich, you might have seen his chest x-ray book, uh, was always adamant. It's not a possessive thing, an eponym. Uh, so the reason Wilms tumor has an S on the end is his name was Wilms. All right, and our third right upper quadrant tumor is a neuroblastoma. You can see this one is displacing the liver as well and not invading it. And there is significant displacement of the kidney inferiorly. On that axial image, I don't think you could say. Right, so it's very important to look at these in all planes, especially the coronal. Right, and there it is on the coronal. You can see there is no claw sign. In fact, quite the opposite. You can see a, an interface between the mass and the superior pole of the kidney where the superior pole of the kidney is actually being distorted. There you go. It's pretty clear looking at the whole coronal that that kidney is being displaced and compressed, but that this is not originating from it. But you've got to be very careful, right? I could see some of these parts that might mislead you into thinking, oh, that's a claw sign, right? Because of the distortion of that kidney. But this one is a neuroblastoma. You certainly can't find a normal adrenal gland in that right upper quadrant either. All 
All right, very good collection there of right upper quadrant tumors. Okay, one more pediatric. This doesn't actually have to be a pediatric case. It's not necessarily a pediatric entity. Uh, but this was a pediatric patient with acute myelocytic leukemia, AML. That's the one that can present, you know, uh, with infiltration of different organs. And I've seen this affect the lungs, the liver. And in this case, the liver is enlarged, may or may not be infiltrated, but the kidneys. Look at these kidneys. The cortex is far too thick. The columns of Bertine are far too thick. And you can even see wisps of density within the pyramids suggesting infiltration uh, even to that level. So there is a large liver, but it looks pretty homogeneous. I think that uh, may not be infiltrated, but those kidneys are striking. Again, look at the cortical thickening and that density within the pyramids. It's present throughout. And here we are on the coronal. You can see the massive enlargement of the kidneys. And again, that pyramidal density, pretty striking. And there they are. So that is a pediatric patient with AML. All right, our next one is an ALL, this one in an adult. And this one really struck me because I just always remembered learning this when studying for boards. These are hypodense renal masses. And whenever I picture lymphoma involving an organ, I like to think of it as infiltrative, right? It's certainly the kind of thing a lymphoma can do, but it doesn't have to. And in fact, the most common manifestation of lymphoma involvement of the kidneys is hypodense rounded masses. So this is lymphomatous involvement of the kidneys and it's pretty typical. So even though this is a lymphocytic leukemia, lymphoma in general, if it does involve the kidneys, will look like this. You can see there's adenopathy down here at the right iliac. Uh, which is a pretty helpful finding, right? It helps you put it all together as, aha, this could be lymphoma. So there's a little enhancement in those hypodense masses. They're certainly not cysts. And there are a few lymph nodes in unusual locations too. In fact, that retroperitoneal one can be really helpful. I have spotted metastases and nodes in this particular region many times and had it actually tip the scales in one direction or another. So see that one in the right retroperitoneum? Uh, that is a spot worth looking at every time because it's always clean. When you see something there, it's almost certainly a pathologic node. And there again, the common iliac adenopathy as well. All right, here it is on the coronals. Again, hypodense masses in the kidneys. There's that retroperitoneal node. And there's that subcutaneous one. There's the iliac node. That's what we're here for is those renal masses, hypodense rounded bilateral renal masses. Pretty classic for lymphoma. So let that play one more time. All right, so acute lymphocytic leukemia manifesting as do most lymphomas. All right, this is a vascular invasive HCC. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. It's maybe not so obvious from an imaging standpoint, but the neat thing about it is the extent of vascular invasion. So uh, this is a cirrhotic liver. We'll see that lower down. There is a hypodense mass in the posterior portion of the right liver lobe. It's a little tough to see on this particular slice, but it will, uh, will become apparent. But look at this. There's a hypodense filling defect in the hepatic vein heading up to the IVC there. So that is kind of unusual, right? We always think of HCC as portal venous invasion. 
But this is a mass that did both. It goes into the IVC, but oh, it also, there's the serotic contour. It also goes into the right portal vein. You can see that filling defect effectively occluding the right portal vein. So very interesting mass doing the vascular invasion thing to the nth degree. See, there's the heterogeneous mass, and there's the portal venous invasion. And you can definitely appreciate the nodular contour of the liver. So there's the hepatic venous invasion and the portal venous invasion. Right. In the setting of cirrhosis, you see a hepatic mass. You're going to call it an HCC until proven otherwise. Uh, but this one you might have looked at and said, gosh, I can't tell if there is there really a mass. But then you spot that venous invasion and you're done. Right? It leads you right to it and it all comes together. Cirrhotic liver, uh, heterogeneous, hypodense, irregular mass, uh, plus two venous filling defects, hepatic and portal. Pretty much seals that deal. Okay, so that is vascular invasive HCC. Okay, to offset that one, before you get too cocky, uh, I wanted to put this one in. This I actually had this in private practice, so this dates back uh, 19, 20 years for me. Uh, but this is an incredibly valuable thing to know. I just said cirrhotic liver with a mass and portal venous invasion, right? That just spells HCC. So how is this one different? Well, there is a giant right liver mass. There is dimpling of the capsule, cicatrization of the capsule. However, is this liver contour nodular? It is not. And in fact, I've noticed that right here adjacent to the falciform, on either side of it, is one of the first places I see cirrhosis manifest on CT. It'll retract a little bit and just take on the slightest uh, nodular contour right there adjacent uh, to the falciform. And so when I'm wondering, is this cirrhotic or not, I go right to that spot. And if I don't see anything, look how smooth that, that whole capsule is, right? This is not a cirrhotic liver. And now we have portal venous invasion. You'll, you'll be able to appreciate that that is, in fact, the portal vein, and there's a filling defect within it. So this is a potential real fooler. And I actually remember uh, this was presented on a tumor board and uh, was presented as an HCC. And I said, this is a MET. It's a MET because metastatic liver lesions will cause focal cicatrization of the capsule and portal venous invasion is not the exclusive bailiwick of the HCC, right? I've seen breast cancer METs do this, and this one was transitional cell. But that, the important thing to recognize is a little contour abnormality of the liver does not cirrhosis make, right? That is capsular cicatrization. There you can see the portal vein invaded. A few other areas of capsular cicatrization, but still not a cirrhotic liver. And look at the rest of the liver. It's not nodular. The caudate is not big. Right? But there is some undulation there, some cicatrization. That is a tough case. And there's even some uh, biliary obstruction due to that mass as well. So there you go. It's not a cirrhotic liver, it's a cicatricial retraction of the liver capsule and invasion of the portal vein by a metastatic lesion. And there you can see that portal vein very nicely. All right, metastatic transitional cell. 